Okay, here we are at the periodic table again, and in this activity, we're going to look at some of the, what we call, trends and properties of the elements in, that we can find in the periodic table, and we're going to be making a graph of those trends. So first, I want you to go to ptable.com, so you can see up here I typed in ptable.com. Just type ptable.com up in, in the window here, the address bar, and then you'll be here. Next thing you want to do is click on the Properties tab up here on the table. Remember, last time we were looking at the orbitals. This time we're looking at properties. And you can select all these different properties here. We're going to be looking at one of three, so I'm going to, I'm going to let you choose. You can either look at electronegativity, you can look at first ionization energy, that's what this means here, first ionization energy, or you can look at the radius. So what do these all mean? Well, this one's the simplest, the radius of the atom in picometers. So when I click on this little circle here, I can see that hydrogen, for example, has a radius of 53 picometers. What is a picometer? It is 1,000 trillion of a meter. So it's very, very small. But this is 53 picometers. You can see that helium is 1 picometers. Lithium is 167 picometers, beryllium is 112 picometers. These are the radius of the atom. So this is how big is the atom. Alright, and that's what you're looking for with the calculated radius. Now, electronegativity is telling us about how strong the atom attracts electrons when it makes a chemical bond. So this is kind of what we were looking at in the batteries activity in the, in the lab where we we hooked up the two different metals to each other and we saw which one created a voltage, a positive voltage, and we were talking about how strongly the different metals attract electrons. Well, we're not just looking at metals this time, we're also looking at non-metals, like boron, carbon, and nitrogen. And you see these numbers here, this one says 2.04, carbon it says 2.55, and nitrogen 3.04. Those are the electronegativities. They're on a scale from 0 to 4. The higher the number, the more, the greater the attraction that that atom has for electrons, the more pull it will have for electrons. You can see that fluorine is actually the highest in the whole table, and the shading here is telling me that too. These are kind of shaded, so fluorine is the darkest. 3.98, so it's almost a perfect four. It's it's the high. It has the greatest strength attraction for electrons when it bonds with an atom. It wants to pull electrons off of the atom. In contrast, francium here has the lowest, 0.7. So it's, that has the smallest attraction, the weakest attraction for electrons. The third thing you can do is ionization energy. This is the amount of energy that it takes to remove an electron from the atom. So let's say you wanted to pull an electron off of the atom. How much energy would it take? Notice that that fluorine and neon and helium all have the highest energies. That is, it's, it's most difficult to take an electron away from those atoms. And those are the three trends that you can look at, either the radius, the electronegativity, or the ionization energy. And what we want to do is make a graph. Now the graph is going to have two axes. It's going to have the atomic number on one axis, and it's going to have the property that you pick on the other. So let's just look at calculated radius first of all. And I'll show you an example of how we're going to do this in our Google Drive. So I'm going to click on Google Drive, and then I'm going to click Create, and we create a spreadsheet. Now you've done this before. We made a little graph before from one of our labs. I am going to, then I'm going to start putting in uh, some, some atomic numbers here. So let's just and what I want you to do is just um, do 1 through 18. So let's do elements 1 through 18. Now here's a little trick. If I type a 1 in here, and then I grab onto this little square, and pull it down. Oh, sorry. I can't do that. I've got to put in 2 first. Put in 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to save myself some time if I click on all those, and then I drag this down. But I don't, you don't have to do that, you can just type it in by hand. And 
and then radius and peak readers. Okay, now I'm going to have to flip back and forth between the periodic table and my spreadsheet. Make sure you have them open in different tabs. Remember to open a new tab. Um, open a new tab, you always just click on this little guy up here. This is the tab, new tab button. I want to make sure that I have my spreadsheet open in one tab and my, data, my table open up in the other. Alright, so let's see what we've got here. Hydrogen, its radius is 50. So I'll just type it in. <coughs> Helium has a radius of 30. Uh, atomic number 3 is lithium, and that has a radius of 100. Atomic number four is brilliant. 112 is the radius. Atomic number five is boron. 87 is the radius. Atomic number six is carbon. 67. And then nitrogen is 56 and 48. So I'm going to remember those three. 67, 56, 48. 7, 56. And then fluorine is 42 and neon is 30. Oops. And I'm going to stop there for now. I want you to go all the way to 18, but I'm going to stop here. Now, what happens if I just select these two columns and click on this little insert chart symbol here. Now I want to it's got a reverse so I need to reverse these in my tables. So I want to have this as my x-axis so I want to move those Here. Now let's see what happens. Alright, so I need to pick what kind of chart I want. This time I'm going to make it a line. Make it a scatter plot. There we go. Now it's got my atomic number on the x axis and it's got my radius on the y. And so I can change my title. Horizontal axis title is going to be number, and my vertical axis title is going to be radius and peak numbers. And I'm going to say insert. There we go. Now I'm going to pull this over here. So that is my that's my chart. Now you can see with the radius it went down. By the way, what was this? This was hydrogen and helium. Then it popped up like this when I got to lithium. But then it gradually went down again as I 